All right, good morning, everybody. This is Dennis McCall with Practical RF. Today, we are going to look at the relationship of uh, passive intermodulation power and spectral regrowth. Our experiment is going to use uh, two channels generated by the CC site uh, four port transmitter. And we have configured to transmit one channel at uh, one CW at 600 and another at 625. And we're going to turn that on. Okay, we are on on the BTS master. We see F1 and F2. F1 and F2. Hopefully you can see that, see the powers are about equal. And we have this fed into a uh, Hewlett Packard lab quality attenuator. And we are going to set to 80, 80 dB right now attenuation, but we're going to decrease the attenuation until we see spectral regrowth inside or we're driving the BTS master out of its linear range. We're going to see all bunches of, of alarms and we're going to look at the relationship between attenuation or signal level uh, reduction and the intermodulation of the third order, which is on marker three and the fifth order, which is on marker five. All right, so let's get to it. Reducing the attenuation, we see the power level going up. 20. Okay, now we have a whole bunch of alarms. All right, so we now the third order marker is at a neg 70 right now. We're going to drop 10 dB of attenuation in. And here we are at minus 102, minus 101. That's about exactly where we would put it. Now let's go back to the overload. And right now, uh, let's see, four, five, uh, one, two, three. No, let's see, okay, now the fifth order, I have two dB of attenuation right now. I'm going to take one dB of attenuation out. We're at, we're at 107, now we're at a minus 101. We're gonna take another dB of attenuation out. And we're going from a minus 100 to a minus 101 to a minus 96. Again, adding a dB of attenuation on the fifth order, marker five, minus 96 plus one dB, minus 101. Minus 101 plus another dB, minus 106. Math works out. All right, that's it. Oh, the relevance of this is that if you have passive intermodulation, external passive intermodulation, um, in an antenna closure, for example, these higher fields are going to be a problem. But for every dB that you can reduce the fields that are hitting your PIM sources, you're gonna get a force multiplier on your noise reduction. So you can use, uh, get rid of the FRP, or you can use solutions like isotrusses, antenna backing to reduce the field levels that are going behind the antenna. And for every dB you reduce that, and you're gonna see a reduction of six to 10 dB with their solution, you're gonna see an IM multiplier, force multiplier in noise reduction. That's it for today.